AI code, music, art, text, at least in this very moment, is something you need to worry about. We'll see if the AI doomsayers are correct, and in the long term it just doesn't work out, but at least in the short term immediate future, the tech is here and people are using it. So if you are running a project or running a company or anything else that just deals with data, which is most things, you need to have a very clear policy for how you are going to use or not use this tech. Otherwise, you are just asking for drama when eventually someone tries to do so. And just a few days ago, the NetBSD Foundation came out with an updated policy to answer exactly this problem. New development policy, code generated by a large language model or similar technology, e.g. ChatGPT, GitHub Copilot, is presumed to be tainted, i.e. of unclear copyright, not fitting NetBSD's licensing goals, and cannot be committed to NetBSD. This exists on the NetBSD commit guidelines under point number two. Do not commit tainted code to the repository. If you commit code that was not written by yourself, double check the license on that code permits import into the NetBSD source repository and permits free distribution. Check with the author or authors of the code, make sure that they were the sole author of the code, and verify with them that they did not copy any other code. Code generated by a large language model or similar technology such as GitHub slash Microsoft Copilot, OpenAI's ChatGPT, or Facebook slash Meta's Code Llama is presumed to be tainted code and must not be committed without prior written approval by core. Now, don't get me wrong, I like the intent, but there are some very minor things I would criticize about this. I would personally change such as to including but not limited to. Someone may try to argue, oh, well, what they're using isn't actually part of this group. It's actually a different thing. There's not actually the same because we're using different buzzwords to describe it. That's obviously someone who is trying to circumvent the rules and that person you probably should just get rid of anyway because they're clearly trying to be a bad actor, but it will make that argument just a little bit harder for them to make. One thing I do like here is they've given themselves a very clear out. Must not be committed without prior written approval by core. On the off chance that maybe what you're trying to commit is okay. In that situation, they've clearly said, okay, if we approve it, you can go and commit it. If they didn't have this here, Again, some people might argue, some people might try to start drama about it. They said, oh, you can never do it, or why are they letting this person do it? Here they've said, if we let it, it is okay. Now, it's probably not going to happen, and most things are going to be rejected, but this is good to have here. Now, I've read through the rest of the document, it's really not that long, and there is one thing I've noticed that is distinctly missing here. There is absolutely no mention of AI-generated text. This section specifically mentions AI-generated code, tainted code. There is no mention of using a system like this to generate documentation, for example. I've messaged them about it over on Mastodon and I haven't gotten a response yet, so I don't know if this is an oversight or they just don't really consider this important. As it stands, strictly by what is written in the guidelines, using a system like this to generate documentation is still okay. I can't imagine that's the intention, and if the documentation is clearly AI-generated, maybe it's going to start a discussion, and maybe it's going to lead to the guidelines being updated again. But at least in their current form, that's technically okay. But with the guidelines being this clear around AI-generated code, I can't imagine that's the intention. And if you want to stick around in the project, I would recommend not pushing your luck. Just in case you've been living in the woods for the past few years, why are they making a big deal about tainted code, about unclear copyright, not fitting NetBSD's licensing goals? What is wrong with the code that comes out of these systems? One thing they do want to make clear is this is not about code quality, it's about copyright. 
I know we've all seen examples of code being spit out where it's including people's Twitter handles. What you get just doesn't make any sense. Is using a made-up API or a made-up library. That isn't relevant to this. Let's just assume that these systems are perfect and produce only the highest quality of code. Even then, there is still a problem. The deal here is it's almost impossible to know whether or not you're actually allowed to use this code and how this code should actually be licensed. These systems are trained on tons and tons of code regardless of the license. These systems will have GPL, MPL, MIT, BSD, source available code, all mixed in together, all like spinning in this magical AI machine. You mix it up and you ask for some prompt to be solved. It will then spit out a result that attempts to solve that. You have absolutely no idea what the license of this code should be because all of this code with potentially incompatible licenses is just mixed up together. You don't know which part of that code should have which licenses attached to it and whether or not the licenses that should be attached to it are compatible with what you are doing on your specific project or even whether or not certain parts of that code are substantial enough to be licensed in the first place because if there is say a single line of code that really can't be licensed that came from a source available project that doesn't really matter you can't copyright a variable assignment for example but if it's a big chunk that is very clearly from that project, that's a different story. Now, the companies that are spending billions and billions of dollars on this problem do not want this problem to be talked about. Whether we're talking about Microsoft with Copilot, Meta with Llama, OpenAI with ChatGPT, or any of the others out there, none of them even want this issue to be acknowledged. Because even if there was an answer there wouldn't be an answer across the entire world. There would be different countries that all have their own different rules on how these systems should be handled. And currently there are a number of ongoing lawsuits about different aspects of these systems, whether we're talking about art generation or code generation or text generation, that are all in different jurisdictions that are all trying to answer small parts of this problem. And feel free to correct me if my information is outdated, but I don't know of a single country that actually has clear guidelines on how this tech should be handled. It seems like the tech is just being deployed and governments are like, huh? Huh? Computer make tech? Huh? What is, I don't know what this is. How does that work? And probably about 30 years from now, we'll finally see some regulation that goes into place that is somewhat clear about what should be done. Right now, these systems are operating in a very weird legal gray zone where it's not entirely clear if what is generated by these systems is allowed to be used whatsoever. At least for now, even if this tech is something you do support and you do see as a good thing in the long term, right now the logical course of action is to basically hold off on its use outside of basically education purposes. If you have a project that you want to know if you should allow AI-generated code or not, I would say the not. And of course someone says the obvious point, there is no way they can verify that though. Now the idea of AI verification is a weird arms race. The verification side very much seems to be losing in most cases, but in the case of NetBSD, it isn't just like a random repo on GitHub. Contributing code to NetBSD is a little bit of a process. This page here is the contributions to NetBSD page, basically outlining how to make contributions. When we're talking about high level things like feedback, bug reports, accessing the mailing list, things like that, all of that is pretty straightforward. It gets a little bit more complicated with submit fixes and code. Fixes and new code are passed into the same database as bug reports. The database can be browsed at this address right here. You can pick an entry from the database to analyze and submit the fix back in email to this email address right here with the problem report number as the subject and your contribution will be automatically added to the problem report. Do not worry if you do not have commit access to the source tree. 
the responsible person or persons will review it, and if it looks good to them, they will probably commit the fix. Unlike some random small project on GitHub, your commit isn't just going to be directly merged without any thought being had. At least, it shouldn't be. This commit is going to be looked at by a member of the NetBSD Foundation, and then that person is responsible for making sure that what is being committed is actually good code that should be committed to the NetBSD source tree, and in this case, is code that is not tainted by coming from one of these AI systems. This is one of the sets of rules that every person with commit access has to follow. Becoming a committer is not easy. It requires joining the foundation and signing various contracts that place the burden of responsibility on the member. It's a fairly reasonable assumption that we should be able to trust our members, and if not, they shouldn't be members. Whilst it is also part of the public guidelines, this is also a hiring policy. It's part of the developer contract that all new members of the foundation are required to sign. Foundation membership is required for commit access. I have no doubt that once in a blue moon, some random bad actor slips in through the cracks and manages to make their way in and seems like someone who is perfectly reasonable. As we've seen from cases like XZ, it's absolutely possible, especially if they are hurting on maintainers. But by putting these hurdles in front of people, it does do a great deal to sort of filter out a lot of the people that just aren't really that dedicated, both dedicated to doing the right thing and also dedicated to do the wrong thing, but thankfully there is a lot less people that are interested in doing the wrong thing. But by having this set of guidelines that is very clear on what is and is not allowed to do, if someone is discovered to be intentionally allowing this AI generated code in, you have a clear way to say, okay, you know what you're doing, stop doing this, or we are going to get rid of you. Obviously, it's different if they just made a mistake, but if there is a repeat set of actions here, this is reason to remove someone from the foundation. And once again, this is not about code quality. It is entirely about tainted code and copyright. And right now, there just isn't a good way to solve that problem unless I guess you have a model that you trained yourself on code that you know is clean, but... Nobody's really doing that. Hopefully over the coming years we get some sort of clear answer on what is and is not allowed here. Because right now there's just no way to really tell. As much as these companies want to pretend like there is no issue whatsoever, there is a lot of unsolved questions. So let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think this is a good choice from NetBSD? Do you think they need a policy whatsoever? Or do you think it's kind of redundant? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one over these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scrubs, Libera, Libera Pay, link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And what if I told you this video was AI generated?